In the previous step of our OS FS40's tuning project, we installed a new camshaft with improved timing. We also installed relief grinded valves to improve gas flow. To prevent valve flutter, we have installed stronger valve springs. As the new springs were too large in diameter, we had to drill out the cylinder head so that they would fit into the cylinder head. We were able to assemble everything and the cylinder head just looked great. The OS FS40 is now in its third tuning stage also looks great. It runs well, but we couldn't increase the performance significantly. We were able to increase the power from 0.81 to 0.83 horsepower. The torque even dropped slightly from 0.55 to 0.53 newton meter. On the other hand, we were able to increase the maximum speed from 16,000 to 18,900 RPM. For me, the result was somewhat disappointing. I had expected much more from the improved timing. What happens now? What can we do to further improve performance? We will have to come up with something new. To get more power, we need to further improve the gas flow. Let's take another closer look at the cylinder head. The valves have plenty of free space. There is a lot of dead space around the valves, which is not used. Thanks to the non-centric glow plug, there is a lot of free space, especially at the inlet valve. We can therefore try to somehow install larger valves in this cylinder head. I have decided to install larger valves. I'm making the exhaust valve slightly larger from 8.4 to 9.0 millimeters. The intake valve, on the other hand, I enlarge significantly from 8.4 to 10.4 millimeters. The asymmetrical valves are intentional to compensate for the lower gas pressure at the intake. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Copper beryllium sleeves are pressed into the cylinder head as valve guides. We have to make new ones ourselves to fit the larger valves. A lot of work. I have built a special pressing tool. I then pressed out the two sleeves with my hand press. That went surprisingly well. The sleeves are out and you can also see the 90 degree intake and exhaust ports of the cylinder head. We will also enlarge these later. Then I also made new bushes from copper beryllium for the intake and exhaust valves on a lathe. The outside diameter has to be very precise so that they can be pressed cleanly into the larger milled cylinder head. The valves fit in very well. So far, so good. I clamped the cylinder head on my milling machine and aligned the valve guide. I then CNC milled the seats for the new valve sleeves. Milling the cylinder head did not cause any problems. On the left side, you can see my larger milled cylinder head. On the right side is the original one. Now we press the larger sleeves into the cylinder head. I also do this on my hand press. Don't worry, the jerky pressing in is normal as the press fit must be quite large. The sleeves are now pressed in and everything looks good so far. The new valves also fit without any problems. Now we have to drill the inlet and outlet bores into the valve sleeves. At the same time, I enlarge the bores in the cylinder head from 5.5 to 6.8 millimeters to increase gas flow due to the larger valves. I pre-drilled the cylinder heads before pressing in the sleeves and then only drilled the side hole in the sleeves. Here in the video, you can see the pre-drilling. And then, disaster. Material breakthrough at the inlet duct. I wanted too much and drilled too big. Is it all over now? First, I had to gather myself and come up with a solution. After thinking about it for a few days, 
I came up with the idea to install an aluminum sleeve. To do this, I enlarge the inlet duct from 6.8 to 7.5 millimeter and then insert the aluminum sleeve with the original diameter of 6.8 millimeter. Fortunately, this worked well, and the material breakthrough has now been repaired. Here you can see the aluminum sleeve instead of the breakthrough. Nice. I then drilled the inlet and outlet holes in the copper beryllium valve bushes. This went without any problem, and the intake and exhaust ports are now enlarged from original 5.5 to 6.8 millimeters. That is a 50% larger cross-section. To ensure that the valves fit perfectly and seal correctly, I slightly sanded the valves into the valve bushes by hand using a lapping paste. Now we can mount the valves in the cylinder head. Everything fits well and the valve springs. Valve plates and valve clips were mountable without any problems. As the new valves are slightly longer, I had to fit a spacer to the rocker arm holder. I set the valve clearance to 0.10 millimeters. This illustrates how much larger the new valves are. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I have mounted the fully assembled OSFS-40S in its now fourth expansion stage on my test bench. Now the big moment has come and we'll see if it runs. huge success. He started right away. Now, of course, comes the important question. How much extra power do the larger valves provide? Only one answer. Let's dyno it. We have achieved 0.93 horsepower and 0.54 newton meters. The maximum speed was 17,900 RPM. Is this a good result? Have we achieved an improvement? To answer this question, let's make a direct comparison with the previous tuning stages. We can see that we now have significantly more power compared to the third stage. The power increased from 0.83 to 0.93 horsepower. That is an increase of 12%. The torque remained basically the same at 0.54 newton meters. I say that is a good result. No, the empty column is not a mistake. There will be a fifth tuning stage. The aim here is to break the magic 1.0 horsepower barrier. You can look forward to it. Finally, I can only say that I hope you enjoyed the video and that you like this project as much as I do. Please share and subscribe.